Coach, uh, so I'm guessing you hit the ground running on the, on the recruiting trail right after the Big East tournament. Has that been the, the plan for the next month? Yeah, we're going to you know, try to make the best use of this time. Uh, there's a number of different ways to do it. Certainly recruiting is a big part of it. Uh, meeting with our team, uh, getting our team healthy, uh, beginning some individual workouts, um, and then obviously, most importantly, making sure they're, uh, they do their job uh, academically. You know, obviously getting the team healthy, Dwayne had, had a rest. Your guys were a little banged up. You know, what's, what's the kind of been part of getting everybody healthy right now? Well, just to, you know, give you guys an update. You know, Dwayne has a little fracture in his wrist where he'll have to take a, a few weeks off. Um, but we, we expect it to heal completely, fully, and quickly. Um, and then Luke Fisher is going to have to have surgery on the shoulder. So, uh, you know, those two guys, you know, getting healthy is more than just getting over the bumps and bruises. Uh, but we expect a full recovery, and, uh, you know, that's about that. Is that Luke's left shoulder? It is. Do you expect him to not be too set back for, for work in the summer or that type of stuff? For how long, how long of a process do you expect that to be? In? We'll, we'll know more after the surgery. Um, but, you know, we think, uh, you know, he'll make a full recovery. Obviously, we're not going to rush him back to anything. And I think he'll, so he knows it's a big summer and, you know, he's going to find ways to, to get better while he's getting his shoulder 100% healthy. Luke, is it a minor procedure or a major procedure? I mean, anytime you have surgery, I would say it's a, it's a major procedure, but it's not an unusual procedure. Speaking of Luke, what, what did you see the most improvement from, from when he first became eligible through, through the I thought he really finished off the year pretty strong. Uh, you know, uh, he got adjusted to the physicality of the game. You know, and, and for us, we didn't have anybody that he could practice against who was a physical player. And so the games, you know, he's matched up with you know some of the best centers in the country. And uh, it, it takes a while to get used to, uh, but I think he settled in. I think he had a really nice year. You know, I really consider this year for Luke it, like his freshman year. He, he didn't play at Indiana, and then he had to sit out a whole semester here. So uh, I think he grew a lot in that semester he was able to play. And the added attention that was on him benefit him down the road that you know, he probably saw more attention than most yeah. freshman, sophomore, big men do. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, he saw a ton of attention. and. Uh, you know, when, when you're that good and as he continues to improve, teams are going to have to game plan to stop him. You know, what our, our hope is we surround him with enough guys who can shoot the ball where, you know, it's more of a pick your poison type of thing rather than that's what we're going to do every, every time. So, uh, and we will do that. So um, our guys that are coming in and, and our guys that are here will, will improve and give, maybe give Luke a little more space to operate. Considering the, the depth issues you guys had this year, are those two <coughs> remaining scholarships kind of burning a hole in your pocket, or are you willing to sit on them if you don't find the, the right fit? Well, we're always looking for the right fits, and uh, but and at the same time, we're going to be aggressive and trying to figure out if there's guys who are the right fits that can help our program. Uh, so we're we're actively recruiting all the time. Could you just uh, just describe your first year here at Marquette? Would you say there were a lot of growing pains? I mean, how would you describe this first season here for you? Well, you know, one, I'm honored to be the head coach at Marquette. And uh, you know, somebody asked me the other day, you know, would you would you still have done it? A thousand percent. I mean, this is a this is a special place uh, that needed some recalibration. And so, it's not unusual when you take over a place um, that you know. You, you deal with unusual situations, whether it's kids leaving or, or whatever it may be. So um, I think we learned a lot. Um, I think we'll grow greatly from this year. Uh, hopefully we won't have as many unpredictable things like some of the injuries. Um, but I think we'll all look back on this year and say this year was a very valuable year because we learned a lot of lessons. We got better and we got hungrier. So you, there's that one year where it, that one unusual year at Duke where um, you didn't make the, the tournament or whatever, but not making the postseason is a rarity for you. Is that motivational? Is that something that you mention to the guys and say next year that's the goal? How, how do you view that? Yeah, yeah, our goal is to be in postseason and uh, to be playing this time of year instead of watching people play. And 
you know, we have to make the most of our summer. You know, that, that, that's a long way away. The thing that we can control is how much we're investing into improving, to buying into the things that we believe in as a culture and a team, and uh, <coughs> making the most of each day, and, and then welcoming the young guys in when they come in and helping them get acclimated quickly. How excited Richard, are you about this incoming uh, class next season? Very excited. I mean, uh, I think first of all, we got a, a good bunch of guys. Uh, I think they're all guys who are gym rats, who love to be in the gym, love to play. And I think they have uh, a, a really good level of talent. And usually that's a really good combination for success. You mentioned the need for recalibration when you got here. Because in what sense? Or is that the kind of thing that happens whenever there's a, you know, a new coach in yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I walked into a situation where it, uh, you know, there was a lot of uncertainty here. Um, you know, with the, the former coach leaving, uh, there's the potential of a lot of other people leaving. Um, you know, there's a, a very different way of doing things. And so, you know, all those things take time to get used to. And, um, and so that's what I meant by that. Are you there now in terms of the uh, level? Yeah, well, I'm you know, no, certainly comfortable being here. We, we still have a lot of work to do. I'm not comfortable with being 13, 19. Uh, so we have a lot of work to do. Coming in last year, obviously picking up the pieces, like you said, how different will your off-season approach be this year compared to last year? Uh, it, it'll be, it, there'll be some differences, um, you know, because it won't be as much, uh, I won't spend as much time hiring a staff and, and all those different things that you have to do to build a program. It, uh, uh, we can even invest even more fully in our players. Um, you know, we're going to go on a trip this summer to Italy in late summer, which will be a good thing for our team uh, to grow and, and to improve. So um, this this is a big summer for us, and we got we have to make the most of it. You mentioned your staff. You know, last year obviously <clears throat> hundreds of people wanted those positions. You picked the people you did. How good do you feel about your staff? I feel great about my staff. Uh, I love the guys that I hired. I think they. First and foremost, are great people. Uh, I think they're great teachers. I think they're wonderful with the kids, and, um, and certainly helpful uh, to me. What benefit can the European trip have have on a team? Well, I think you know, give, give first of all, give you an opportunity to practice. <clears throat> so you're able to practice in the summer months, which for a team that's going to have 50% of the teams probably not ever going to have played a college game. Just learning how to practice and using those times is going to be very important. And then, you know, the four games that we get overseas or whatever it is, um, the, the opportunity to play together, maybe get a little more familiar with one another, understand how we do things. Um, it can be very valuable. What, what types of teams do you expect to play while you're overseas? Are they going to be college level teams or kind of, uh, you know, national level teams? We haven't completely sorted that out, but they'll be high level teams. There was so much focus from my uh, Day one of the season on the future, like recruiting class coming in. Wondering in hindsight what kind of impact that might have had on your guys, maybe how maybe how you guys coached. Well, it didn't really have any impact on how we coached. Um, you know, I mean, the guys who we have coming in have gained a lot of attention, and that's not really our doing. It's how well they play. Um, you know, if anything, maybe the player. If there's an impact on the players. Some of the guys who aren't here maybe said we're gonna have a hard time playing. Uh, that could have happened. I'm not saying it did, but those things happen. With Henry Ellinson, um, uh, do you expect him to score right away just because of? Yeah, you know, I certainly hope so. <laughs> <laughs> is that his role right off the bat? Yeah. Well, his role is to be a great player, and a great player is, has the ability to make an impact in every way uh, on both ends of the floor. But obviously, he's a guy who's going to have to score for us. And he can do it in, in a multitude of ways. He can score by the basket, which we'll need him to do. And then he can score facing the basket. He's also a really good playmaker. And so uh, he, I think Henry has the ability to impact the game in every conceivable way. And that will be my challenge to him, to do that. And in an unusual situation with his brother being eligible next year as well, what, what do you foresee his role being? And, and can you also kind of uh, weave in his athletic ability, what he's doing, that he could possibly even be going to Rio next year, maybe. Yeah, I mean, what Wally's done this year has been incredible. I mean, first of all, behind the scenes for us, he's been really good. And uh, 
Uh, he and Henry are, are very different basketball players, uh, but Wally is a good basketball player. Uh, Wally is a special uh, Olympic level track athlete. Um, he placed third in the indoor national championships last week, and he may have trained less than a half a dozen times for him. You got these guys who are training every day for that. It's incredible. It's incredible. Um, you know, he's got a chance to be an Olympian, which is it's just incredible. Um, the thing I like the thing I like about that that translates to basketball. It shows he's a competitor, and he's got pride in his performance. And those are two really magnificent qualities to have, outside of being a heck of an athlete. On that note, has there been any talk of him taking a year off to train for the Olympics? There hasn't. You know, he's been kind of all in in basketball. And, uh, so there hasn't been uh, any talk of that. Steve, what will he. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Um, guys are so nice. <laughs> age, before, age before beauty. Uh, Steve, will he uh, contribute to your team next year? Do you envision. Well, yeah, I anticipate him contributing to our team. I mean, he's a, he's a guy who can shoot, he plays really hard. Uh, High level of energy, uh, very active player, uh, team guy. And those are all things that uh, are exciting. Have you ever had that problem before? <coughs> An athlete so good in two different sports, whether. Yeah, you know, no, not to that level. Right. I mean, uh, coached a guy at Duke who was a two sport athlete named Reggie Love, but he wasn't that good at either. <laughs> 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 Got into politics, and he got it. The, and he's in the White House, so it all worked out. <laughs> it all worked out. You can tell him I said that. <laughs> well, how has Wally contributed behind the scenes? You know what? He's uh, he comes every day to work. He's got great spirit. Um, he competes like crazy. Uh, he's he's had he's had days in practice where he you know shoots lights out. Um, but you know he he's a competitor. He's a competitor, and uh, that brings out the best in everyone. You know, one of one of the things with a shorter roster and the inability to practice, you lose some competitive elements because you can't go five on five. Or if you go five on five, it's really as good as our walk-ons have been. It's 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 not somebody you're not competing against somebody who can realistically take your job. And I'd like to get to a point where. We have guys who are always fighting for their job. I think that's how you, we didn't have that yet this year. Go all the way back to the start of the season in the Wisconsin Lutheran game. You guys played end-to-end -end defense, up-tempo, and you had to over the course of the season because of injuries, lack of depth, variety of factors, transfers, adjust your style of play. How much adjustment did you have to do? Did you anticipate having to do that much in your first year? And does that mean that next year we should expect the team to see a different style of play? Well, as we get to, to learn about the freshmen as they come here, it's one thing to watch them play, but you, you learn more about them when you coach them. Um, we'll try to figure out what system's best for them. Uh, again, we, we tried a number of different things this year based on our personnel and what we felt uh, put our personnel in the best position to win. Um, in, in a perfect world, I'd like to play a lot more man this year than we were able to play, although the zone at times was very good for us. So. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see what fits what fits our group. Would you stick with some zone going forward? I know that's not what you're kind yeah. of up with. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll stick with whatever's going to put us in a position to win. Uh, I don't. All all I care about is our guys. Uh, my job is to put our guys in a position to win, and if that means we have to play zone. We play zone. If that means we have to play man, we'll play man. That's that's my, my main motive. End of the season. Do you have exit meetings with players, uh, especially the three seniors? Have you sat down with them? Yeah, what I have. I have. Sa I've sat with uh, Matt and Derek so far. I'm going to meet with Juan here at the end of the week. And uh, you know, with with those guys, it just you know, first and foremost, you thank them for everything they've contributed to Marquette. Obviously, with Derek and Juan, that was over the course of four years. Uh, with Matt, it was just one year. But in that one year, had we not had Matt. Things could have been a lot different. So, um, you know, all three of those guys have given a lot to the program, and I'm appreciative of those things. And 
Um, I want them to know they're always going to be a part of the program and how they can use us to help them. You know, we're, we're ready, you know, we stand ready to help them in any way we can. I know you guys fell to Villanova at the East Tournament, but the game against Seton Hall, just the way you guys play, do you sort of wish that's what you guys could have done the whole season? I mean, it was such an exciting game to watch. Yeah, no, I think the Seton Hall game was, was one of our better games of the year. You know, finally, t towards the end of the season, we got closer to being having eight guys healthy. I mean, for the last half of the Big East season, one, we were, for most of it, we were dealing with Matt's injury. And Matt, <coughs> to that point, was averaging close to 20 points a game at Big East play. So that was a big, big loss for us. And then Juan got injured with the la about the last two and a half, three weeks of the season. And I finally, by the Big East tournament, I felt like we were as close to healthy. And I, and I thought we were able to practice as a result. And we re performed well as a result. And then Bill Noah was just a class of our league. You know, that was, I don't, I don't know how many teams would have beaten them that day. They, they, they're, they're a big time team. I mean, they're a better team than us. Um, and they certainly played like it on that afternoon. But the Seton Hall game, I think, is the way we would want to play. Steve, might be too early for this, but do you anticipate <clears throat> all your coaching staff being intact and in what is Travis Deere's <clears throat> role next year? This yeah, I, didn't, I do anticipate coaching staff staying the way it is and uh, they've all been very valuable obviously the assistants and uh, Mark Brett and, and Chris Carrollwell have done a great job and then the support staff Justin Ganey, Jake Prezzuti, Travis they all they all add a lot to our program and most importantly the young men in our program. On that, well, because of the bigger the uh, NCAA tournament right now <coughs> So many of the top <coughs> heads are breaking down the brackets, and a lot of them are taking shots at the Big East. Where do you think the conference stands right now, and what do you think about the Big East's future? Well, I mean, number one, we're a conference that got 60% of our teams in NCAA tournament. That's incredible. In the pre-conference, we were kicking everybody's butt. Throughout the year, we were the second highest rated conference in the country. I mean, uh, the Big East is was, is, and will always be one of the best basketball conferences in the United States. That's not going to change. I mean, talking heads can say what they want, and that's what they're paid to do. I mean, ultimately, we, you know, the best way to shut those guys up is to win games in the NCAA tournament. And so that's why, for all the six teams that are in the NCAA tournament, we're going to be rooting like crazy for them uh, to have a, great, have a great showing, and I believe they will. A year ago, Carlino was playing at the Bradley <coughs> Center for BYU, and he came and contributed as a fifth-year graduate uh, player. What's the protocol for finding others? Because if you can find two of them, you can fill Steve Taylor's class going forward and still have three for 2016. What's the protocol? Do you have to wait till the end of the semester to make sure they graduate, or is each one different, or do, you, do they have to contact the athletic director, or how does that, how does that work? Well, every situation is different. Usually what happens is a kid makes the decision that he wants to transfer. And then prior to making the decision has some understanding that if he finishes a certain amount of courses, he would be eligible for graduation at that, that school. And then, um, you know, then you have to apply to, you have to take the GRE and apply to a graduate school at another university. And so the timing of that is different. Some kids that last until the summer. It took Matt a first a first session of summer school at BYU to graduate. Uh, so, it's there, that's not an exact science. That, that's kind of a relatively new phenomenon. Uh, but it happens. All that you're seeing it happen more and more. And obviously, uh, for us, it was a benefit because we got a heck of a player and a heck of a guy.